car 28. Calling car 28, car 28. Car 28, proceed at once to Stoner's Grocery, 408 East 5th Street. 408 East 5th Street. Hold up. Proceed with caution. That's all. What's this all about? That's him over there by the tail, right on the scene of the crime. Are you kidding? Why should I try to kid a policeman? I said that's him and I want him run in for petty larceny. What about it, Billy? Did you take anything? Not exactly, Mr. Sullivan. I... He's lying, lying, I tell you. Never mind the gab, Stoner. Save it and tell it to the judge. Come on, Billy. Right off of the street, I picked him, Judge. Because I'm a pushover for kids, see? And the way he told it, he said he wanted to make some extra dough after school. So I thinks to myself, sure, give the kid a chance. So I did. So the minute I turns my back, he's got his dirty mitts in the till. That's what I'm charging him with, Judge. Snatch it from the till. Well, son, it's, um, it's Billy, isn't it? Yes, sir. Billy Freeman. Well, Billy, did you take the money or didn't you? Gee, I don't know. I, I guess maybe you could say I did, but... Guessing won't do, Billy. Either yes or no. Gosh, I'm all mixed up. It, it don't seem like I done nothing wrong. Yes or no, Billy? Sure, I took the money, if that's what you're waiting for me to say. But, but golly, I had to. Are you sure you had to? There's no excuse for stealing, Billy, no matter how much you need the money. Are you sure about that, Your Honor? I beg your pa... Oh, it's you. That's quite a statement for a man in your position to make. Just when was the last time you needed money badly enough to steal for it? Now, just a minute, lady. Ah, uh, uh, Sullivan, here. Yeah. What are you trying to do? Get the Child Welfare Society down on our necks? Uh, not to mention the country club set. See, Miss Allen is quite within her rights as a welfare worker to appear as counsel for the defense. As a matter of fact, she's quite welcome. They haven't hurt you, have they, Billy? As a matter of fact, we were just getting ready to take him to the torture chamber. You were just in time for the fun. I shouldn't be the least bit surprised knowing this court's ideas on child psychology. Oh, child psychology? Another book you've read? What would you like me to do with the boy? Let him go scot-free just because he's admitted his guilt? I'll bet he twisted your arm and made you tell him, didn't he, Billy? Now, wait a minute, Joan. That's not a nice thing. My name's Miss Allen, if you please. Oh, Miss Allen, if you please. Uh, Billy, would you be good enough to tell your story to Miss Allen, if you please? Billy, you don't have to repeat anything that's going to make you unhappy. What I want to know is, just why did you take that money? Gee, Miss Allen, I had to, to get Pal out of jail. Gosh, maybe they shot him already. Shot him? What for? For not having a license. That mean old dog catcher come and got him. Oh, it's a... And that's why you took the money, son. Snatched it, you mean. If you shot at this child, I'll... I'll pick at your store. Billy, why didn't you ask your mother for the money? I ain't got a mother. She, she died when I was real small. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, ma'am. Honest. Only, only sometimes I wish I had a mother like most kids. Of course you do, Billy. Why didn't you get the money from your dad? Wouldn't that have been easier? Gosh, no. Pop ain't, I mean, Pop hasn't got no money. You see, he's been kind of sickly lately, and, well, he couldn't work. And, honest, I just had to have it. I couldn't let Pal down, not even if I had to go to the electric chair. Besides, I had it coming to me. 
For money, I mean. He had a buck coming to him. And then the little thief tries to hold me up for a deuce. Uh, how long did you work for Mr. Stonerbelly? From after school till 8 o'clock at night, for a whole week. And you had the nerve to offer him a dollar. Is that right, Stoner? Sure, what do you expect? A union scale? If you have any other employees, I promise you I'm going to have you investigate. Give him his money, Sullivan. Right, you've got your money. Sure. That's all you have to me. Certainly. Then get out. There's the money for Powell's license, Billy. Honest? Gee, Powell and me will never forget you for this. But that doesn't mean that you're forgiven. There's still no excuse for taking anything that doesn't belong to you, no matter what the reason. And if you ever come before me again, I'm going to send you up the river. Maybe for life. Case dismissed. That is that's satisfactory to me, Sal. Sullivan, take the boy down and get his dog for him. Yes, sir. Uh, never mind, uh, uh, Sullivan. If you wait here a minute for me, Billy, I'll take you down to get Pal. All right, man. The decision was entirely satisfactory to me, Sal. Oh. Sit down. I have something I want to tell you. What? I was horrid just now, and I'm sorry. You were wonderful. So are you wonderful. What have I been telling you all along? Twenty-eight times by actual count, I've asked you to marry me. And what have I said each time? Will you marry me? I certainly... Now, Joan, you're getting me all mixed up. That isn't what I said. I meant that we're both wonderful. Just like two and two makes four were wonderful. Come over here. See across the street? It's the marriage license bureau. They can add us up in a jiffy. No, Roger. It won't work. 29. I wish it were just a problem in simple arithmetic. But there's too much higher mathematics involved. We've both had too much of everything. Too much money, too many luxuries. We don't know what it is to really live. No. I want to marry a poor man. A man of the people. A man of the... What's the matter with me? Didn't I take this juvenile court job when I could have gone with the biggest law firm in town? What have I got to do to be a man of the people? Talk like Gene Otter? <laughs> you know, you may work out after all. I was really surprised at you today. Not a trace of snobbishness. What do you mean, snobbishness? Anybody could see the boy was telling the truth. All he needs is to have someone give him a decent chance. Exactly. And I'm going to see what we can do about it. We? Joan, you mean that? You mean that I'm we... going to see his father. Oh, his father. Anybody can see his father. And the score was six to five. Come on, Billy. We're going to get your dog. Gosh, Miss Allen, I hope he's all right. Oh, certainly he is. Bye, Judge. Bye, Billy. And don't worry then about your money, because I'll pay you back soon as Pop gets a job. All right. Goodbye, Joan. Bye, Roger. Sullivan, what do you know about the boy's father? Well, not very much, sir. Except that he was a Marine in the last war. And quite a hero, I guess. They wouldn't let him come back on account of his physical condition. And they almost lost his mind about it. And he's drinking too much for his own good. It's home. That's all that really matters, Billy. Shall we go in? Yes, I'm...
tell you, Miss Allen, maybe I'd better go in first to see if Pop's sleeping, because he gets mighty tired looking for work, and, well, he wouldn't like it none if I brought ladies calling without giving him a chance to spruce up first. Here, have a seat. think of it, maybe you'd rather sit on the porch. It's, well, like Pop says, it's much cooler there, anyhow. Thank you, Billy. All right. I'll stay here and keep you company. Boy, he's sure a fine dog, ain't he? Well, I'll be out in just a minute. Boy, old Pop be surprised. Miss Allen, but you can come in. Why can't I expect him any minute now? Well, this is it. Of course, there ain't no frills, but, but that's because these are bachelor diggings. That's what they call them in England, the captain says. Well, who's the captain, Billy? That's my pop, Captain William Freeman. United States Marine Corps. Hmm? You mean to say you ain't never heard of Wild Bill Freeman? Mm -mm. Say, now that's awful. Look. This is what they gave him. And look at who signed it, too. The Secretary of War. Is that your father, Billy? This one? Mm-hmm. That's him, all right. Of course, he's changed a bit. <laughs> Would you like to see some of his medals? Love to. Oh, they're beautiful. My, he must have been a very brave man to win these. Say, he still is. He's the bravest man in town. Only, well, some folks don't seem to remember. I guess that's why he has such a tough time getting a job. Oh, I'm sure that's why. So am I. Look at this is his distinguished service cross. <laughs> Wonderful. Would you like to see some of the mementos he brought back? <gasps> I'd love to. They're right in there. That's, uh, that's just where me and Pop keep all our old junk. <laughs> Gosh, it's sure funny how stuff piles up, ain't it? <laughs> it happens to everybody. <laughs> Here, let me help you tidy up a bit. Oh, that's all right, Miss Allen. I can do it. Gosh, it's funny you come today. Pop and me always clean up on Fridays. Well, he wouldn't like it none if, if he knew you saw the place looking like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right, Billy. Oh, uh, where's the broom? I don't know, Miss Allen. Billy. <laughs> Thank you, pal. What do you know? It's right there all the time. Handy like you know. <laughs> See, this is swell you, Miss Allen. Oh, I like doing it, Billy. <laughs> There's a captain. <laughs> captain. Hello, Billy boy. You all right, Pop? We got company. Well, with me. Now, who's going to come and call on us? Her name is Miss Allen. She's a big society lady. 
And she fixed it up with the judge so I wouldn't have to go to jail. And Pa wouldn't have to be shot. Jail? Shot? What, what are you talking about? Oh, it's all right now, Pop. I'll tell you about it later. Come on. This is my pop, Captain Wild Bill Freeman. How do you do, Captain Freeman? How do you do, Miss Allen? My apologies, Miss Allen. You see, your boy didn't tell me. It's my fault. I'm afraid I intruded. Not at all, Miss Allen. Not at all. Billy, a chair for Miss Allen, please. Yes, sir. Here, Miss Allen. Thank you, Billy. Any luck today, Pop? No luck today or any other day, son. Have you tried any of the defense plants, Mr. Freeman? They should have something for you. Well... That'd be all right, Miss Allen, but... You see, Pop's waiting for a letter from Washington. He's going to be a Marine again. He's, maybe he's going to be a Major. Or even a Lieutenant. Aren't you, Pop? Well, I'm afraid not, Billy. I... The letter came, and... I guess they don't need Wild Bill Freeman anymore. Can't pass the physical. Too old, I guess. Too old? But you're a valuable man. Why, you're no older than, than General MacArthur, and, and look what he's doing. No use, Billy. I try. Guess this is one war the Freemans ain't gonna help win. Well, well, maybe they take me, Pop. Maybe if we lie a little bit and... Maybe if I stand up real straight and tall, maybe they would, huh, Pop? Fred, maybe they wouldn't, Billy. But we could try, couldn't we? You understand, Miss Allen, how there's got to be at least one Freeman in this war. Well, I'm afraid your daddy's right, Billy. You're really much too young. But, but I'm tall for my age, and, and I'm strong, and... Oh, Pop, what are we going to do? Look, here's an idea that may solve your problem. See what you think of it. Did you ever hear of the Army patrol dogs? No, ma'am. Well, those dogs have to enlist in the Army just like people do. And they're regular soldiers, just like anybody else. Their job is to stand guard with Army sentries at camps, outposts, and even with guards at defense plants. Does that give you any ideas? Gee, I don't know. How could that help us Freemans? How could we... We could, couldn't we, Pop? Pal's sort of a Freeman, and, well, he could carry on the tradition, couldn't he? Well, yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe he could. Sure. Well, Pal, I guess that settles it. Tension. At ease. Excited, pal. Just think, you're gonna be. And he had plenty of company. There were Great Danes, Doberman Pinchers, other shepherds, Airedales, and Collies. All of them confused and wondering at their strange new surroundings. Then came their first day out. Each one led by a kindly, understanding trainer into the main yard, like raw recruits they were. And being mere dogs, they imagined they were being brought of their confinement to frolic and get acquainted. They were frisky and unruly as they barked their hellos and swapped stories, in dog language, of course. But what's this? What is that man doing? What does he have there? Suddenly, our canine rookies find out as one explosion after another comes over. Pal and the others bark, frightened and angry, unable to understand why the trainers have turned on them. Now they're using bigger ones, louder ones. You won't be hurt. Quiet, boy. That's all. 
They keep it up day after day. What Pal and the others don't seem to understand is that an army dog must get accustomed to gunfire, whether he ends up patrolling or on some battlefield. Before long, they get used to it. Pal is now completely unafraid. He has learned lesson number one. He'll never be gun shy again. Now, wait a minute. This is going too far. That'd blast anyone's ears off. Look out! Now, what do you make of that? Well, pal, it's a, you and your friends will have to resign yourselves to going through that smoke screen. You know, you might have to do that in actual warfare. Forget how you always hated smoke. You're a soldier now. Atta boy. Easy, it's only smoke. <laughs> Won't hurt you. I'm gonna be an army dog. You'll have to learn how to take it. Just to make it tough, let's see how you and the boys do with the hurdles under the same conditions. Oh, so you can't wait now. That's the way. Just like taking milk from a kitten, isn't it? Smoke or no smoke, obstacles or no obstacles, you're ready. Here they are again after a week of obedience training. They've learned to heal, to follow the trainer without straying, jumping, or barking. And they've learned to stay or stop when that command is given. Detail, halt, relieve, guard, forward, start. Return, guard, forward, start. Detail, attention, detail, forward, start. Right turn, halt. To the rear, march. To the right flank, march. Detail, halt. Relieve, guard. Forward, march. Yes, this is a far cry from their original confusion when they were first brought out into the training ground. All right, boys, at ease. Here, here, is this any way to treat a fellow after he's been such a good dog? What are you trying to do, get me mad? You hit the nail right on the head, pal. That's the idea exactly. You've got to be vicious when the enemy lunges at you or your master. Leap at him. You won't hurt yourself as long as that spring is there to relieve the strain. That's right, grab that burlap sack. Grab anything he hits you with. Wrist it from him. That's going to be your job. Pull and pull hard till he lets go. Good boy. You're convinced now, aren't you, that you're stronger than he is. From now on, you'll always win out because it's been planted in your mind that you are stronger. Look at those scars. No wonder they wrap the trainer's arm like that. Why does he wear a coat with such soft padding? You could almost bite through that, couldn't you, pal? Maybe you will, and your teeth might hurt the trainer, but not half so much as it might hurt you if he were padded with something harder. And once that happened, you would never try it again. So rather than ruin a good army dog, the trainer is going to take that chance. Here he comes, firing to anger you, which doesn't faze you much now. All you want is to get at that arm and hold on to it until he drops that gun. Well, here's your chance, pal. After him, boy. Nicely done. At the trainer's command, you let the enemy go. Then, close by, you help transport your prisoner to safekeeping. 
wary of him every step of the way. You've learned your job, pal. Like Billy said, you're a real army patrol dog. Well, if it isn't Captain Freeman. How are you, Sergeant? And Billy. Hello, Sergeant Day. Say, I hope we aren't interrupting anything, but the boy and I were just going by. I thought we'd stop in and see how pal's getting along after all these weeks. He's a real soldier, sir. You should be proud of him. Shucks, Sergeant Day. It just comes natural to Powell, because he's a fighting Freeman, that's all. Well, sir, I tell you, he's a fighter, all right, and smart. As trainer Wilson here says, three weeks has been and you should see him. A veteran, sir. Will you be seeing action soon, Sergeant? Well, it won't be long. It won't be long. I'm making final inspection tomorrow and figure to accept these dogs for the Army. Maybe you two would like to stay and see what's going on here. Well, I'm afraid we'll have to be going, Sergeant. Uh, the boy has to go to school and I have a job to finish. What is it, son? Ask him, Pop. You know. What? Oh, uh, uh, Sergeant, uh, you suppose we might see Pal for a few minutes? The boy kind of wants to have a word with him. Well, sir, it's not according to their rules, but... Oh, I'll take a chance. Trainer Wilson's a good scout. Come on in. Thank you, Sergeant. Do you mind if we see Pal? Not at all. You see, this is the first time Pal's been away from home, and, well, I kind of miss him. Stay. That's why they don't like to have them see their owners. They forget and disobey. All right, Pal. I'm surprised at you acting the way you did today. Wait, what do you want to do? Spoiler Freeman's record? Wait, that's in, um, in some... What is it, Pop? Insubordination, son. That's what it is. So don't do it again or you get thrown into the guardhouse. Promise? <laughs> okay, I'll forgive you for now. Billy, I think we'd better go now. Hey, Pop. Well, so long, Private Freeman. And remember what I said about insa insubordination. Well, goodbye, Sergeant, and thanks. It's a pleasure, sir. A pleasure. Thank you again, Sergeant. Goodbye, pal. Goodbye. Remember Pearl Harbor. Let's go back. Come in. Are you Judge Davis? That's right. Did you want to see me about something? Yes. You see, my name's William Freeman. You're see, Billy's father. Yeah. I'm awfully glad to see you. I've heard quite a bit about you. Well, Billy doesn't exactly mention you in passing, either. <laughs> According to him, you're the greatest man outside the White House. Oh, that's a pretty big order. I hope you won't be too disappointed. Mm -hmm. Won't you sit down, Mr. Freeman? Thank you. Now, tell me, is this a social visit or official? Well, it's a little of both. First off, I wanted to meet you, and secondly, I think the Freemans are indebted to you. Indebted? How do you mean? Did Billy ask you to? No. As a matter of fact, Billy didn't even mention it, which isn't like him. Uh, Miss Allen happened to tell me. Miss Joan Allen? Yes, you know her? I certainly do. <laughs> yes, I, I know Miss Allen. 
Uh, uh, getting back to, to uh, Billy, Mr. Freeman, uh, it really isn't surprising that he hasn't told you because he's been paying me in installments. I've got a record of it here somewhere. Let's see, I always keep a record of everything I do, or most everything. I always have it because Billy comes in, and I never know when he's going to come in, so I always have it. Uh, more keys, I never can find locks to fit them, but I... Here. There we are. I knew I'd find it. Yeah. 83 cents so far. That's pretty good, huh? What a kid he is. Well, let me pay the balance. Oh, if you don't mind, Mr. Freeman, I'd rather you didn't. You see, this is between Billy and me. And if his sense of obligation doesn't permit him to tell you, and he wants to take care of it himself, I say let him do it. Let him make his own way. It's good for him. He seems to realize it, so certainly we should. Well, come to think of it, I guess maybe you're right. I think I also understand why he thinks so much of you. Miss Allen, too. Miss Allen, uh, what did she say? Uh, not, not that it's important, you know. I just thought maybe you might remember. I, well, I don't remember anything ex special, except I know she speaks well of you. Oh, just, just well. Yes, as a matter of fact, she was saying only the other day that she thought she, you should keep more in touch with Billy. She was? Yes, of course. I don't know anything about these things, but isn't it part of your duty to keep in touch with Billy through her? I mean, unless you're too busy here in the office. Well, of course, I am. I'm pretty busy. I... But you're right. It's my duty to see more of her. It... Because of Billy. Because I will see more of her. Do, uh, um... Well, uh, tell me, Mr. Freeman, is, uh, how are things going with you? Uh, you hear any more from, from the Marines? No, I couldn't pass the physical. But I'm going to keep on trying, because I'm in better shape now. I haven't touched a drop in weeks. Oh, that's fine. You know what I think the trouble was, Judge? I've been reading all this stuff about what our enemies are doing to our innocent people, and it drives me frantic. And then I think those same things can happen to my boy, and it drives me crazy. And I start drinking to forget about it. But one day I said to myself, Bill, I said, this drinking isn't doing you any good. You're on the wrong beam. Now snap out of it. Get on the new beam and see how you feel. And how do you feel, Bill? I feel fine. I feel perfect. Why, well, I could go out right now and fight two wars like that last one. But I'm taking it easy. I'm biding my time. I few more weeks of good hard work and healthy living and I can pass any exam they want to give me. That's the spirit and you'll make it too. Oh, I hope I will. You know, it's an awful thing to know that you can't help and you want to help. But you can't get back in to do it. What? Oh, sorry, Judge. I, so I'd better be going. It's, it, it's been awful nice to talk to you and... Well, I'm glad you dropped in. Will you please come out and see us real soon? And don't forget what I said about Miss Allen. I certainly shan't. Goodbye, Judge. Well, what are you doing here? Why aren't you in camp? So you went over the hill, huh? Well, I never thought I'd see the day when a freeman was a deserter. I ought to turn you over to the MPs right this minute. But no, sir. I'm going to give you another chance. talk to the sergeant and see if I can square you with it. Hello, Sergeant Day? This is Cap Freeman. Have you got a dog, A-W-O-L? Yeah, he's here and looking mighty remorseful. 
What do you want me to do with it? As bad as that, huh? Well, I'll see what I can do for you. Sergeant, if he promises never to do it again, will you take him back as a special favor to me? Just a minute. Pal, he says he'll take a chance on you. But I've got to be responsible for you from now on. How about it? You promise? He promises, Sergeant. Good, I'll be right over with it. So long, pal. Remember what you promised. Sorry about the dog, Sergeant. I'm sure it won't happen again, and uh, thanks. Are you in a hurry? Because if you're not, we're doing some interesting things here. You might enjoy it. All right, boys. All right, sir, I'll tell you. In this one, the man is hidden in the bushes. Then the dog is turned loose. No leash this time. And if he's a good patrol dog, which we hope he is, he'll find his man, run him down, and disarm him. Say, that's pretty good, Sergeant. Now he's found his man. He'll follow him through fire and water. Now, if you step over here, we can see better what's going on. Notice, sir, the dog doesn't hesitate. Now watch closely. The man is armed, sir. He'll shoot. I've been reading all this stuff about what our enemies are doing to our innocent people, and it drives me frantic. You know, it's an awful thing to know that you can't help and you want to help. You can't get back in the door. hangs on until the trainer calls him off. Oh. Well, sir, isn't he good? Captain Freeman. Well, sir. Did you see Captain Freeman leave here? He was here a minute ago. No, I didn't see him leave. Well, sir, isn't that funny? Pretend like I'm the orderly. Oh, that's the reason for that fancy apron, huh? Yes, sir. Won't you sit down, please? Well, thank you, Billy. I don't know what's keeping the captain. He's kind of late. Well, he's, he's all right, isn't he? Oh, sure. He's never been better. I guess something must have kept him. Maybe he got a new job, huh? That's mm -hmm. probably what it is, Billy. 
I'm sure he's all right because he dropped in to see me today. We're old friends now. Well, then, if you've already met him, we'd better be running along. We don't want to hold dinner up when the captain gets home. Oh, don't go, Miss Allen. Papa would probably be very glad to see you again. There. That's probably him now saying he'll be right home. Boy, will he be surprised when I tell him who's here. Hello, Captain. Colonel? When they make you that, Pop? Oh, excuse me, Colonel Mason. I thought it was my Pop calling. No, sir. He ain't home yet. Can I take a message? What? Would you mind repeating that, sir? All right, son. Now listen carefully. I've just received notification from Washington. They're going to give your father another chance. They're willing to stretch a point and take him back into the Marines. They did? Honest? That's, that's wonderful, sir. My pup's going to be the happiest man in the world when he hears this. Yes, sir, I will. And me and my pop both appreciate it. Well, goodbye, Colonel. And I hope they make you a general for this. A general, sir. Miss Allen, Judge Davis, did you hear? They're going to give Pop another chance. They're going to take him back into the Marines. Isn't that wonderful? Now Pop won't be the only one. It's going to be Captain Wild Bill Freeman of the United States Marines again. Oh, Miss Allen, I'm so happy. Why doesn't Pop come home so I can tell him? Oh, come on now, Billy. Don't be so excited. Your daddy will be home soon. Then think what fun you'll have telling him all about it. Well, look now, I think I hear footsteps. That must be the captain. Cap... Oh, Pop. Hello, Billy boy. Miss Allen. Hello, Judge. Sorry. Oh, Captain. Why'd you do it? Why? What's the Colonel going to tell him in Washington now? Colonel? Colonel, what Colonel? Colonel Mason. He just called and said they're going to give you another chance. Another chance? It's too late, Billy. It ain't no use. I, I had him again today. Is that any way to talk, Bill? After what you told me this morning? I can't help it. I can't help it. I tell you, I can't help it. Pity! Get hold of yourself. Of course you can help it. Just your imagination. You told me so today, don't you remember? <laughs> One gets the rest. That's what you need. You'll be all right. Just needs a little rest. And Billy, if I were you, I wouldn't mention the Marines or anything about soldiering or the war. You know what your dad needs most is a good job to keep his mind occupied. But just nobody will give dad a job. They, they all think he's crazy. I don't think so, Billy. And I think maybe I can find him a job. Do you really, Roger? Will you try? I would anyway, for Billy's sake and his, but if you'll promise to keep looking at me like that, I'll get him a job if I have to build a factory of my own to do it. Ain't he wonderful, Miss Allen? Well, 
It isn't so much that it's our obligation to give a World War hero like Freeman a job, Dave, as it is the thought that by giving him a job, you're giving him back his self-respect. He, he just finished a small job for Neff, the contractor, and you want to see the change in him. All right, suppose I give Freeman a job and he might cause damage that would throw a whole section out of commission. Do you know what those few lost hours would do? Well, I have a pretty good idea, but... you but don't really know. No. All right. Now, let me show you something. Those few hours would mean a few days in some 25 plants spread over the country, plants that depend upon us to supply them with parts. And over on some battlefield, that would mean several weeks of disasters waiting. And they can't wait on battlefields, Roger. No, and they mustn't. You're right about that. I just thought, well, perhaps you might be able to find a job for him on the stock room. Hey, there's a thought. He couldn't get into much trouble there, could he? Oh, that's grand, Dave. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Roger, I hope you understand my problem. I can't let a thing hamper us. Production must be kept going, regardless of breakdowns, priorities, or sabotage. Sabotage? Well, say what you ought to have of some of those army patrol dogs to guard your plan. They're the best protection you can get. Well, now you've got something. I've been wanting to look into that for some time, but I've been so busy. What do you know about them? I know they're the best insurance against saboteurs you can get. You see, uh, they're trained to patrol right along with your guards. Oh, they'll scent trouble a mile away. They always get the man, too. I'm sold. How would you like to take care of the details for me, since you're so interested? I'll do more than that. I'll pick the first dog for you. Good. Now, would you please let me alone for the duration? I certainly will. You're practically alone right now. By the way, Dave, if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. You're a little late, Roger. I haven't been in juvenile court since I broke a window playing baseball. Good morning, Judge. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Dave. Snell, Nixon, the German friend. When do we contact Hankel? In a couple of days, maybe. He'll give us our orders then. Come on, let's get into our street clothes. Then we'll bury these rats in these doors. Welcoming committee. What? No photographer. We got something better, Pop. Look. Pal, what are you doing here? Well, sir, I tell you, he's reporting for duty. Sentry duty, sir. Mr. Titus asked for him. Special. Come on, pal, let's go. Good luck, pal. I certainly can't say the Freemans aren't all out for the war effort, can they, Bill? Look, how about a little all-out effort for dinner? Or is the celebration off? Celebration? What celebration? Just because I'm going on the night shift? Because you and Paul are working together, me, the judge, and Miss Allen are going to take you out. Why, that's wonderful. Thanks. I, I guess I'm just a lucky fellow. This is just the beginning of your luck, Bill. 
From now on, the brakes are going to be rolling at you just like off an assembly line of Amity Judge. Gee, I guess that settles it then, Pop. Because, boy, he sure is a judge. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I checked on the movement of the trucks for the last 30 days. And they travel on almost perfect schedule. Do you understand everything clearly? Everything, Henkel. And you, Fred? I understand. We won't fail. We can't fail. We'll use this new type of corrosive gas bomb. Besides being highly explosive, it'll corrode and destroy every machine in the building. Now, this is how it's used. According to Henkel, that truck ought to be along by now. My pal got hit by a car. Give me a hand so I can get him to the hospital. Sure. You take his feet. through, they're waiting for that stuff. Here we are. Don't move and make a sound. Keep those men busy. All right. Start unloading that truck. Act like nothing's happened.
It's a bomb! Run! I think I'd better go in first. You and Pal wait here. Maybe you're right. 